Hey traders, John Howell here. Welcome to today's coaching video for you. In today's coaching video, guys, I'm gonna give you a quick update on what actually happened in the markets uh, basically this entire month and what we could expect moving forward over the next couple of months so we can really keep an eye on that. I'm also gonna be talking to you about the mining sector, some of the, some of the other sectors, guys, that I see really big moves coming. Um, and also, I wanna give you guys a quick little update about my personal trading with month of May and it actually wasn't a good month for me. I actually struggled this month. I actually had, it was, uh, especially these last two weeks, guys, these last two weeks I've actually struggled. So anyway, I wanna share with you exactly what's going on there. So that's what I wanna talk about, guys, in today's update. So let's actually get into that. Let me actually start off with my, pers my personal trading, guys, uh, and it wasn't good, right? My personal trading wasn't good, and, um, and, and I'm gonna get to that, and then I'll get to the other things as well too, all right? So just a quick little update about my personal trading. Traders, for the first, was that three, four months of this year? Oh my goodness, incredible trades. I had my standards high. I was being disciplined. I was being patient. And then guess what, right? And then guess what? My account absolutely just exploded. Like I had an incredible, incredible growth uh, from, from, from my personal trading. Now here's what happened in this month. One thing, one thing I've learned about the actual trading cycle of things when it comes to trading um, and it and it and it hits me all the time. Is this is that you got to go through a period of two or three or, or more months of really active, lots lots of good trades, and then the market's going to start to go quiet on you. Because I was on such a massive roll for the first three to four months of this year, actually all of this all this year, leading into May, I was on a roll, and I wanted that I wanted to keep that going. Unfortunately. I dropped my standards. Unfortunately, there actually wasn't a lot of really high quality trades in the month of May, especially in these last two weeks. But what did I do? Because I started becoming patient, because I, I wanted to make more money, guess what I ended up start doing? I started taking some really crap trades, right? So I've made a lot of money, I've made a lot of money this year so far. And so 20% of my profits that I actually had in the last couple of weeks, I've actually given that back, right? So I'm still up a lot. Um, and I don't, I, I don't want to talk numbers because the numbers is is irrelevant, right? If I say I've made five hundred thousand dollars and I've given twenty percent of that back, right? Like it's, it's, it's just, a, it's, it's just a number there. I, I don't, I'm not here to talk about how good I am and look at all the money I'm making, right? This is about me helping you. But um, the whole purpose of me bringing this up first in this in today's coaching video is that I actually had a rough rough basically entire may right entire may was rough for me and the reason why it was rough guess what it's because the market went pretty quiet there's a lot of movement in the markets but there actually wasn't a really a lot of good high quality trades and i started to drop my standards a little bit and the reason i'm telling you this here right because you can have a really i have a really successful trading system but if I'm not willing to wait for those trades, then guess what, right? That's what ends up happening. So if you'd like to learn my actual trading system that, that I should follow or that I do follow 90% of the time, <laughs> I started apart from, apart from May, um, then that first thing in the description there, guys, you can join my next webinar and I'll teach you all the details to my trading system. Now, why am I telling this? Why am I being so open about this? Is because one thing I want you to realize as well too about your own, your own personal trading is is that you're gonna go through these periods, right? Like you're gonna, but what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're setting yourself up where you're not completely wiping yourself out, right? I had an incredible four months of this year, lots of good trades, explosive moves, and then May went pretty quiet on me. And because I was looking for more trades, guess what ended up happening, right? I ended up giving some of that, some of that profit back. So the purpose of me telling you this here is that if you ever do get into a space, like what now what am I doing now to make sure I get back on top so I can hit it, hit the ground running in June, July, August, September, and make sure by December I finish the year off really strong. Now again, guys, my equity curve went up a little bit, or, or actually went went up a lot for the first four months. And then 20% of those profits I've actually given back when it comes to that there. So um, what am I doing, guys? And I'm talking about this like, what do you do? How do you actually bounce back from having a rough time where you know you've been dropping your standards? The thing that I'm doing, guys, is I'm going back to basics, right? I'm going back to the basics of, okay, exactly. Okay, I'm obviously not disciplined enough here. I'm not being focused enough. I'm not being present enough with it. I'm not being patient enough. So... Let's actually bring it back to basics. Let's go over all my trades I've taken this year because I, I take screenshots of every trade that I take and keep documentation of every trade, every trade I take. 
Um, and let's actually go back over all the trades this year and let's actually see which ones, what is the pattern that I'm actually looking for so I can actually make sure that I get back on track, right? Because we all have these periods, no matter what trader you are, no matter what you do, we always go through these periods, right? Where you might drop your discipline just a little bit, you know, you might become a little bit too impatient, a little bit impatient. And guess what happens, right? You start to have a bit of a there. But again, guys, what you want to do is you, you don't want to have a bad period, like a few weeks or even a bad month. You don't want to let that roll over into next month and the month after the month after. What you want to do is you want to have June. So my goal is by the end of June, especially by the end of July, is that I've made all that money back again, and then obviously a lot more, and then obviously I keep going for the rest of this year. How am I, how am I, how am I doing that? For me, it's going back over all the trades that were successful and the common pattern within my system and then me getting really, really, really clear again of exactly what I'm looking for in the markets and then having a bit more of a patience there when it comes to my actual trade in there. So I'm bringing this up first for you guys because if you have struggled, maybe if you struggled for a couple of months this year, right? Again, first four months this year, guys, oh, amazing. Especially the last two weeks. I started to really try to force things and it just didn't work out for me, right? So I had a pretty rough month. But to me, it's gonna be an incredible year. It already is, I'm, I'm still up a lot, but it just it just sucks to give 20% of my profits that I've made this year so far, right? Um, I wait, it's like, oh man, I just gave 20%, right? That still sucks there, right? So how you bounce back is you go, okay. <sighs> All right, cool. All right, I need to stay emotionally calm. Let's make sure that I'm going into next week and this month. I want to have. I want. I want to make sure that this year is continue to be a really good year for me. So, what do I need to do? How do I need to get back? How do I need to get back on track? Okay. Step number one. Let's go. Let's 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 refresh exactly what I'm looking for on a good quality setup. Step when it comes to my when it comes to my trading rules. Step number two is um is is making sure that that I have that at the forefront and that I'm being disciplined enough to wait for that for that in the markets there. So. Um, that's that's obviously my goal, guys. And I, I do know by the, by January, by by December this year, I'm gonna have an incredible, incredible year. Uh, but this is just a little blip on the screen. But I'm bringing this up for you guys because I'm trying to share with you what do you do when you have a bit of a rough patch, right? It's like, man, that sucked, right? It's like, man, and 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 I was, I was with my I was with my coaching clients today because I'm with my coaching clients today, and I, and I was telling them about like. Whenever you go through these rough patches, and we all go through them, right? You might drop your standards. It might just be, it might just be a rough patch. What do you do in those moments, right? Because it's every, everything's amazing when it's everything's amazing, right? But what happens when you start to drop your standards? What happens when you start to have a few losing trades in a row? It's like, oh, what ends up happening there? So, um, the idea, guys, is for me, my plan now is is what I've been doing already is to bring it back, okay. Now go over all the trades, go over all the really successful trades, um, go back to the, the rules, the system, and then make sure that my discipline and my standards are really high going into June, and say, right, I'm not taking a trade unless it meets this setup here, and then obviously having screenshots of that setup there. Now that setup, what is what? The setup, the setup is basically the system, right? Now for me, I had the system, but I started bending the rules. I'm like, oh, well, it's not, I even said to some of my private clients, I'm like, well, it's not quite an A quality trade, but I'm gonna take it anyway, right? And so, um, there we go, guys. Rough one for me, but right now, we're going into June. If you had a rough month in June or in May, um, then uh, make sure that that doesn't roll over into June and July and August. Make sure that you're doing the things right for you personally. So by December come, you can look back and say, Wow, there was a few rough patches there this year, but man, I've had an incredible year, right? Because that's what you want, right? Like if I've had four months, I've had, if I've had four months of growth, and then one month of now pulling back twenty percent of my profits, if I can now pick back up in June, right? Pick back up maybe June, maybe July, I'm back to where I was at the at the peak of my account. Maybe but but maybe maybe even by the end of July, I'm now back above that. You know what I'm trying to say? So stay emotionally calm. Bring yourself back. Okay, then what do I need to focus on? What's the pattern? I need to increase my discipline. I'm not being patient enough, and really start to have that. And if you and if you and if you can, um, have have a bunch of screenshots on your desk of the ideal setup you're looking for. That way, when you go to the market, you say, okay, is it this? Is this setup that I'm looking for like this here as well too? So, May really tough month for me, guys. Being really honest with you, but as I said before, that. 
that it doesn't have to be a bad year for you. Don't let a bad month or a bad, for me, it actually wasn't a bad month, it was a bad two weeks, right? Horrible two weeks for me, horrible. I'm like, oh man, my discipline's really locked down. But it's gonna be an amazing year for me, why? Because I'm making sure I really increase my discipline. And on top of all that, guys, have good risk management in place there. If I didn't have really good risk management, guys, I would have wiped out all my profit this year, and that would have, we're talking multiple six figures here, guys. It's like, oh man, that would have stung like a beep, right? Stung like a cookbook, as Greg Doucette says, right? Stung, stung like a cookbook. But um, because because I had really good risk management on these trades, I only gave 20% of my profits away. Again, multiple six figures in profits I've made this year, but I gave 20% of that away. So I'm still up a lot, but it still stings like a bee, doesn't it, right? So anyway, so that's, there's an update for me, for you, for you guys. Let's get, actually get into the market. Let's see what actually happened for the month of May. And so, and what we what we possibly could expect to see moving forward with these markets here. So let's start off with the with the with the stock market here, guys. And um, and now we can see that um, on the Dow Jones we had this high up here, and we also had this low point down here. I don't believe this rally that we had today. I don't believe it's over yet. Meaning, should I say? I don't. I, I believe there's more downside to come out of this level once out of what we're seeing through here, right? We're going through this here, so I really do expect to see um, a, prop, a lot more sideways. I, I just I, I expect to see a lot more downside to come out of this level here. You can see we had a rally up, double top. So all through May, we had a rally, and then we come back down um, on, on, on the Dow Jones. So I'm expecting pretty much something very, very similar now for the rest of for, for June. A lot of volatility, but not a really big move, and that's that's across that's across pretty most most indices out there, guys, that I'm seeing right now. Also, looking at the S and P 500, the S and P 500, you can see here that we actually had a low, and now we're getting very very close to having a higher low here. I don't believe this is got. I I believe, guys, that we could actually be getting ready to hold here. And have a bit more, uh, having a bit more downside to come, right? Because once again, look at this here. If we have a look at this here, it's just like we've actually had, um, we've actually had that through there. So uh, it's not likely we're going to go through here and then come up through there as well too. It's not likely. It's not likely we're going to see that. We're probably likely to see this fail through here and possibly even head back down. Uh, through here somewhere. So there's pro it's possibly, I believe from now before the election, there's gonna be a good 10% correction, like a real big correction out of the market. That's gonna freak a lot of people out. And then we're gonna go back, and then we're gonna go back into a big, into a very big bull market, make sense? So that's what I'm seeing through there, guys, from the, from the S&P and the Dow Jones. But the one outlier of all these markets is indeed the Russell. Look at the Russell here. The Russell is some. This is the IWM now. The Russell is actually doing a lot some, something different here, right? Low, higher low, and higher low through here. We also had a higher low, or we're also potentially getting a higher low. Now, if this is a higher low here, right? If this for some reason does hold through here, and then we start to actually build up through there, right? If we do get that, then guess what? Then we're getting a low, then we're getting a higher low uh, through here, low, higher low, and then we actually can see this thing actually starting to, to break up. If we get something like that, guys, then the real big picture is I do see this thing then possibly having a big, possibly have possibly gone through a big move to the upside, because look at this here. We're getting pretty much nothing going on through here, right? Pretty much nothing going on through there. So you can see that uh, once we, it, it, if we do start to get this breakout here soon, uh, then the Russell, because because the Russell hasn't made a big move, right? So we're possibly getting ready for a really nice move out of the, out of the um, out of the Russell there, guys. So keep an eye on the Russell there. That, that that that's definitely one of those things there. Now let's go look at the actual mining sector here. So the GDXJ um, again, we actually had a very 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 bullish month through 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 the, through the month of of May. But not, nothing really big, right? Nothing really big here. One thing I am seeing right now, guys, when it comes to the mining sector is get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, guys. Because the mining sector, especially the GDX, check out this. Right, look at this here. This is the weekly chart. 
Look at this. This is the this is the mining sector. Get ready for something really big to happen, guys, in the mining sector. Because especially like this is the GDX here. We're squeezing up into this pattern here. We've basically been doing absolutely nothing now for about three, four years. So once this starts to break out, we could be getting ready for a really, really, really big move, guys. So get ready for that, right? Get really get ready for that. Um, so we could see here that the market's come back down. Held, it, it, this is this is what I'd actually like to see myself, right? So this is this is the perfect scenario anyway for the mining sector. I'd like to see this market actually come down through here, hold here, and then start to break back up and pick back up through. If we can get this breakout here, guys, remember this level through here is what that level through there is that that massive resistance over there, right? So get ready, guys. I, I really do sense over the next possibly over the next June and July, I'm sensing that. It's probably not going to do much out of that period. But after maybe, say from August onwards, guys, oh my goodness. So this is also a warning to me, right? <laughs> Just be patient, John, right? Just be patient. Relax. You might be going through a period where there may not be a lot of good trades because where the market is right now, the market's not booming. The market's probably not gonna go through a big crash, but we're just gonna go through this lot of gyrations here. There's probably not gonna be a lot of good trades for the next month or two. You know, again, we don't know, but just be patient. The reason why, because that August, September, October, November, December, I've always found that my best trading times, <laughs> looking at all my results, um, and, and I, sh I share this with my private clients all the time. I don't know why, but the start of the year and the end of the year, the first two to three months of the year have always been amazing for me. In that last three to four months, two, three, four months of the year. It's those, it's those periods through there. And in the middle, things start to go really quiet. I don't even know what that is, right? I've just noticed with my, with my own personal trading, really good for two or three months. Actually, in this case, it was the first four months were amazing. And then last month was hard. So I'm ex I'm really need to keep make sure that I keep my powder dry because when the really good trades come around I want to make sure that I'm ready for it right so which which they will come so Johnny be patient <laughs> right but we're seeing this through here guys once again we can see how we've actually had this whole level through here guys um, all through this level through here. so what I'm seeing once again I'd really like to see this thing pull back to get that high low. And then once we break guys, we could be getting ready for a really, really, really big move from there. Let's go look at silver here. Um, silver on an overall basis, guys, had a, had a nice move up uh, through the month of uh, May, but then we went sideways. I don't expect too much of a big move through uh, through here. We, we may actually have another leg up very soon towards the 34,000 leg. But right now we're just going through one of these pullback phases, right? these time phases through here. We've gone through one of these time phases um, in the markets from there. And also looking at the gold market as well too, guys. Gold, I'm actually expecting to see a lot more downside um, to, to come out of this level here, guys. You can see we had this very, very, very big move to the upside. And now, very big move to the upside. And then we actually had a drop down, a rally back up, and now we're going through here. So what that tells me is we're definitely struggling now so we're possibly getting ready for a bit of a bit of a correction to possibly even see maybe as some of these trend lines come into play. Um, yeah, it might be even something like that through there, right? So something like that through there. So we may even, we may even get like that through there, which is like a what a fifty percent retracement and so much more from there. So so I am expecting to see overall guys, apart from the Russell, I'm expecting to see a lot more sideways to to down move over the next couple of months, because I believe that there hasn't been a lot of fear in the marketplace yet. We've had a little short-term pullback, but generally generally what we, what we see, even in big bull markets, generally at least once, maybe even twice a year, we get these these freak out periods, right? Where the market sells off a good, you know, five to 10, five or possibly even you know, eight to 10%, and it freaks people out. I believe we could be getting ready for that, for that period, especially even in gold, in the stock market. But the really weird thing is obviously that might, that Russell uh, as well too from there. So anyway, traders, leave a comment below, guys. Let me know what you, what how you went in the month of May for yourself. Remember, don't let a bad for me it was a bad few weeks. It wasn't a bad entire week, um, entire month there. But leave a comment below. Let me know exactly how you went in the comment section below. But all in all, guys, remember 
You are amazing traders. You are an incredible trader. Just bring it back. If you want to have a good, like again, my plan is to make sure make sure that I don't blow up all my profits and my account. Guess what? I go back to basics. I make sure that I suck like, okay, I need to be disciplined. And then you give yourself like a really, like I give myself like a th at least a 30 day plan, right? Like, okay, for the next 30 days, I need to be 100% disciplined and only taking these type of trades. If you can start to get back to that, so okay, this, you know, if it's not this type of setup, then I'm not taking a trade for at least the next 30 days. Then guess what? You'll start to get you'll start to get yourself back on track as well too. So leave a comment below, guys. Let me know how was your month. My month was absolutely horrible. Oh, I shouldn't say horrible, right? But it was a bad, tough month for me, and it wasn't the system that let me down. It was me that let me down. I, my discipline, my lack of standards. Um, so there we go traders. If you'd like to actually learn the trading system that does work most of the time when I follow it Then that first link in the description there guys If you'd actually like to join me for the rest of this year to make sure you continue having a good year Then that second link in the description there guys click on that You might be good for my actual coaching program where I can coach you to make sure you have a really good year as well too And on top of that my coaching is all about when you go through these rough periods How do you actually can how do you actually get out of it? So you're not hurting your account too much but, you, but then we can use this as a platform to catapult you to make sure the, the second half of this year is amazing for you.